Now we're on to module seven, and this is where we're gonna talk about the data environment. A lot of details in here, but I think at this point, we've introduced a lot of these concepts without putting the jargon to them. So now that I throw the jargon around and show, show some of the constructs we're dealing with it, I think you'll pick it up just fine. So, data environment. You know, if you think about it, in a shared address space program, each and every thread can see anything on the heap, so there's all these shared variables. These shared variables, and then the variables that are on the stack of the thread, that are private or local to a thread, um, this is what we mean when we talk about the data environment. You have a whole bunch of variables, and how they're shared or not shared defines the data environment. So what I want you to remember, OpenMP is a shared memory programming model. You know, most variables are sitting on the heap and all the threads can see them. Now, global variables are shared among threads. Basically, anytime they're on the heap, they're shared. So, a Fortran common block, a Fortran save variable, module variables, but if we move on to C, file scope variables, or variables that I put the static qualifier on, those are shared. But not everything is shared. If it's on the stack, it is private to a thread. Now we've seen examples of this already. When I have a parallel region and I declare my variables inside that parallel region, those go on the stack. If I have a function, and inside the body of that function, I declare variables. These are automatic variables, they're on the stack, they're private. So simple way to think about it. Heap is shared, stack is private. And if you keep that kind of in mind, if you know enough about how compilers work, so you can go through that thought process, you can kind of keep the default straight. But just to make absolutely sure, I want to come back to this example. All right, so I have an array, A of 10 elements, and I've got my main function. And then I'm going to have an array index of 10 elements that I'm declaring. Then I have my pragma OMP parallel, and then I call a function called work that I'm going to pass index into. And I'm going to have a print statement. Now let's take a look at that function. So in that function, I declare that I have this external double array, A. Then I have my function, and then inside the function, I declare an array temp. And then I have a static int count. So you can see I've kind of created this contrived example to have as many different storage classes as I could cram into one little block of code so we could talk about this. So now let's imagine I have three threads, and let's walk through what is the data environment as seen by each of those threads. So as I come into the parallel region, before the parallel region, I've got A, index, and count sitting on the heap. Can you all see that by looking at this code? Count is sitting on the heap because it was declared static inside the function. Index is sitting on the heap because I declared it prior to the parallel region. A is sitting on the heap because it was a file scope variable declared prior, prior to the main and declared in the function as an extern. All right, so those are on the heap. Now I come inside each thread. All right, now inside each thread, inside that function, I declared an array temp. That's going to go on the stack of each thread. So now each thread will have its own copy of temp that I can work on. So I hope you all can see that. The default rules, as, as you looked at this example, I'm hoping at this point, it seems pretty obvious to you. And as I said, to me, like the, the light bulb went off in my head when, uh, when someone said, you know, stack, private, heap, shared. And if you keep that straight, it's all pretty easy. Now, there are times you want to change the storage attributes. And we've seen a couple of them. I snuck a couple of them in already. All right, and what we're talking about is I have a construct and I have some variables that exist prior to that construct. I want to change their storage attribute inside the construct. So I declare some variables. Now I have a, oh, I don't know, a pragma OMP parallel. And now I come inside that parallel region. What's the storage attributes of those variables? And how can I change those? All right, I can call them shared. So I can have a clause on that construct that says these are shared. I can have a clause on that construct that says these are private, which means they're local to each thread. Or I can declare that each one is first private. Now, I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll make that really clear in just a moment. Now, I can also declare that a variable is last private. Now, what does last private mean? Last private means I apply it to a loop construct, and what it says is, is whatever value of this variable 
the last iteration saw, okay, the last iteration of the loop, that value, that private, is copied back out to the global. I'll have an example in a second, so don't get too caught up on this later. And then <clears throat> I can change the default attributes. I can set something default private, default shared, or default none. I might point out that, the, the, that default shared is what you have already. If you have variables defined before a construct, by default, they're shared inside the construct. So default shared is, the, is what you get by default. All right. Default none is really handy, and, and we're going to use it a little bit later on here. Default none says, I require, I the compiler, require that you explicitly define the data attribute of each and every variable. So very handy for debugging. It says, basically, I'm going to flag anything that you do, try to do, by default, I'll flag it as an as a error at compile time. Now, default private's interesting. In Fortran programs, we use it all the time. It's not available in C. And when, when we first came up with that, it irritated the heck out of me. You know, I, I, hate, I hate these inconsistencies in the language. We bend over backwards to make, if you know OpenMP for Fortran, then you know it for C. You can move back and forth very, very easy. So why is default private legal in Fortran, but not legal in C? And here's what the smart people who write compilers told me. There are things in C that appear as macros from the standard library that are not necessarily implemented as a variable. They might be implemented as a macro. They might be implemented as a function call. There's many, many different ways to implement it. And because one might put one of those in a program scope before an OpenMP construct, the compiler would have no idea what to do if you went default private. All right? That either meant a whole lot to you and you're nodding your head and going, oh, yeah, man, of course. Or if it didn't mean anything to you, that's fine. If you're like me, an application programmer who would never write a compiler anyway, just take it on face value. You can't have default private in C. Doesn't matter, though, because really the only one you're going to use is default none. When you're trying to debug a program, default none can save your butt because it can force you to make sure that you declare each and every storage attribute. All right, that's a lot of words. Let's look at examples, because if you're like me, you don't know anything until you see an example. So let's start with private. So here I have an example that I call wrong because it's buggy by design, all right? So I declare a variable temp, then I have a pragma OMP parallel for private temp, all right? So now I've said inside this parallel region, I want you to create a variable named temp that is private to each thread. Each thread gets its own value. Now I come into this program and I do an increment of temp, and then I print temp, and there's a problem. Why? Because private doesn't initialize the variable. It creates the temporary, but it doesn't give it an initial value. So there is no well-initialized value. Now when I come to the end of that parallel for loop, then what value of temp is seen? And what it does is it reverts back to the global copy. So that print statement will print zero. It'll print the global copy. All right? So private variables are created uninitialized. And when you move beyond the OpenMP construct, they go out of scope and they disappear. You revert to the global value. So we've talked about private, which modifies the data environment to create a private copy of a variable for each thread, and it's uninitialized. What if you want to give it a well-defined initial value? That's what first private does. So it creates a private copy, but it will initialize it to the global copy. So take a look at this example I have right here. I have an increment variable, incr equals zero. Then I have pragma OMP parallel four, but now instead of private, I have first private and then that variable. So now it's going to create a private named incr, but it will initialize it to the global value. So now it has a well-defined value of zero as it goes on. So that's what first private does. Now what last private does, so imagine I'm going through a loop and I'm going to create a private variable and I want to retain the last value. And I want to know that last value when I go outside the loop. So remember, private will create a private copy of the variable inside the scope of the construct. 
but when you get to the end of the construct, they disappear. They have to because the stack goes away, right? So, so they have to go away. But what if I want to save that last value? So what last private does is it says whatever the last iteration was, whatever value, whatever thread ran that last iteration, copy its value to the global scope. So in this example, I have a variable x, which is double. I declare it last private. So now there's a private copy of x. I go inside the pragma OMP parallel 4 and I do my thing. And this loop iteration range went from i equals 0, i less than n. So whichever thread did iteration i equals n minus 1, you guys with me? Whichever thread did iteration i equals n minus 1, the value of x that it has is copied out to the global scope. So when I get to the end of that loop, I now know what the last term's value was. That's what last private does. Now let me just give you one little detail, right? For the most part, it just confuses the compiler if I have the same variable appear in multiple uh, clauses. You know, if I have shared x, private x, the compiler doesn't know what to do and it barfs all over you, okay? Not allowed. But it does kind of make sense that I might have first private and last private. So that's the only case where I can have multiple ones. I can declare something both private and last private, or I can declare something both first, first private and last private. So that's the only case where I can have multiple clauses. So if you understood this, you should be able to pass the following test. Here we go. Consider the following simple case. I have variables a equals 1, b equals 1, c equals 1. Now I have a pragma OMP parallel, and I declare b as private, and I declare the first private of c. All right? What I want you to think about here is R, A, B, and C local to each thread or shared? And what values do they have? And what values do they have after the parallel region? All right, take a few minutes to think about that. Oh, a few seconds. You should have it right away if you have it at all. Okay, here we go. Here are the answers. Ready? All right. So, with this code, I've declared B private. I've declared C first private, which means they are local to each thread. A was not declared in any of those private clauses, so it is a shared variable. So A is shared by all threads, all threads can access it, but now each thread has its own copy of B and its own copy of C. What values do they have? Well, C, I had the first private, right? So it's going to be equal to 1. B I declared as just private, it's uninitialized, all right? Since it's uninitialized, then it has no well-defined value. All right, so that's key thing with B. I'd better initialize it before I use it inside the loop. Now when we get to the end, what values do they have? Well, the private copies of B and C go out of scope. They go away, so I'm left with the global values. So B and C will equal 1. All right? A, well, its value will be whatever it was modified to be inside the loop, right? Because it was shared, so the loops could vary it. So that's those clauses, first private, last private, private, and shared, which is what you get by default. Those are the big ones. So now we're going to move to an exercise. Now let me tell you about this exercise. In the software that's provided with, with these lectures, there's a routine called mandel.c, M-A-N-D-E-L.c. What it's going to do is it's going to compute the area of a Mandelbrot set. And basically, this is the standard thing we do in parallel computing education. I hand you a program and it's buggy. Your task, debug it. All right? And, and, and the comments in the code, it tells you, you know, the value should be approximately pi over 2. And so you can tell when it's giving you the wrong answer. So the first thing to do is find this code, run it, and see what happens as you run it. And you know what? Change the number of threads, run it several times, and see what happens. Then go in there. And, uh, and fix it. And I'll give you a hint. There are multiple errors, and they all have to do with the data environment. So uh, have fun. Spend the time to find those bugs, and maybe even think about how you'd optimize the program a little bit, and then we'll discuss it again when you get back.